Okay, so let's get started on 7.7. What we're going to be talking in this section, we're going to be talking about in this section, is something called complex fractions. Now, complex doesn't necessarily mean hard fractions. What it means is fractions within fractions. That's what makes it complex. It's going to look, trust me, it's going to look complex, all right? But if you follow this one thing, it's not going to be that bad. So 7.7, .7, we're talking about complex fractions. Let me give you an example about what a complex fraction looks like. Not so bad, right? Not so bad, just a regular old rational expression. That's a fraction. And then what we do is we go, OK, let's make something like that. Now, all of a sudden, it looks really nasty, right? Because we have fractions within fractions. And that's not such a great thing, because we go, what, how in the world are we supposed to do this? Now, if you uh, were to explain this to me, would you say, which would you say would be the main fraction bar? The main fraction bar, is that this one? No. This one? This one? That's the main fraction bar right there. That's the main thing going across. What we have is one fraction over another fraction. So this thing, call our main fraction bar, So we have a numerator that's a fraction and the denominator that's a fraction. So our main numerator and our main denominator. You'll notice we have some minor numerators and minor denominators also, one for each fraction that we have. Now here's the, the whole idea. So I'm going to give you another example. We're going to build up to this one. Here's the idea and our steps. Firstly, can you identify what is my main numerator in this case? <laughs> the, main, the main numerator, yeah. Great, this whole thing, that's my main numerator, that's my main denominator, that's my main fraction bar. Are you guys all with me on this? Just the terminology of getting to know these complex fractions? All right. The first step, what you're going to do, is you're going to make sure that your main numerator and your main denominator are just one fraction. Okay, just one fraction, not a fraction plus a fraction, a fraction plus a number. That you have one fraction on your main numerator and one fraction on your main denominator. Do I have that here? Is no. this just one fraction on the top? No. The, just on the top right now. Yeah, that's just one fraction. Is this just one fraction? Okay, that's my step one's completed then, so I'll write that out. But what we're trying to do is simplify that the numerator and denominator have only one fraction. Okay, so we've done that already. This already has just one fraction, one fraction. Let's look up here. Look at the top here, folks, everybody. This is still just one fraction. Do you see that? Even though it has two terms in the denominator, the, the uh, minor denominator, and this has two terms right here, this is still just one fraction over one fraction. This would also satisfy step one. Are you with me on this? How it, would not, how it wouldn't satisfy step one is if you had, like, plus something or minus something over here, then that would not be one fraction over one fraction. Are you clear on that? Okay, so step one, not so bad, just make sure we have one fraction over one fraction. Here's the whole deal. What operation does a fraction signify? Addition, subtraction? Division. It's division, that's right. So what we know about fractions is that if we have a, we have a fraction, if we have a fraction, even a complex fraction, this means division, sure, and this means division, but mainly, this one right here, our main fraction bar, that also stands for division. Are you with me on this? So the main fraction bar stands for division. 
Likewise, I want you to think about this. If this is 3x over 25y squared over 9x squared over 5y, what this really means is 3x over 25y squared, what's this mean again? Divided. Divided by that fraction. So what we can do, we can set up a division problem. So if we have a complex fraction, all it really is, it's a fancy way to say that you have a division problem. That's it. Just a fancy way to say that. So step two is probably the, the only step I'm going to teach you today because everything else we're going to be using past, past stuff for. Step two is set up a division problem. Let's try that. So we notice we have one fraction over one fraction, and this main fraction bar means division. And so what this says is instead of 3x over 25y squared over this, I'm going to write 3x over 25y squared. That's great. That's my main numerator. <coughs> this fraction bar means division. So watch. We, we even say the same way. Divided by. We say 3x over 25y squared <coughs> divided by. Divided by what? Great, we're not flipping that around or anything. We have 3x over 25y squared divided by 9x squared over 5y. Here we have 3x over 25y squared divided by 9x squared over 5y. It's even read the same way. We have the same thing here. This is main numerator divided by main denominator. This is main numerator divided by main denominator. It says exactly the same thing mathematically. How many people understand understood that? Cool. Now, this looks a whole lot better than that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're already used to do that. Yeah, yeah, you're used to it, right? So we've already done that. And that's the whole point. You can't really work with this that much. You have to translate it into something that you, you know how to work with. Do you know how to divide fractions? Yeah. Of course you do. Do you flip the first one, the second one, or both of them? The second one. Second one. So we're back now to section 7 point, what is that, 7.2 or something? 7.3 where we actually multiplied and divided fractions. We've done that in here, right? Mm -hmm. We're back to that stuff. So now step three is you're just going to solve this like you normally would. Or simplify, I suppose would be the better word. Simplify as usual. So if you remember this, what we did with uh, division, we flipped the second fraction, with, which you already told me about. Instead of division, we have now multiplication. So we reciprocate that second fraction. And what do we do after that, folks? <coughs> do I know? Before that. Yep. We know how to multiply, right? We just do this. We put the dot, dot. And then we simplify whatever we can. Do you see anything that simplifies, folks? Wake it up today. Let's get going. 5, 25. Okay. 5. 25, great, I heard that one. Uh, someone else left hand side of the room. Y Y squared. Y, y squared, okay, got it. Someone else who hasn't spoken yet. The three and the nine. Three and the nine. And lastly? And the What's on our numerator? One. Good, so we're not just gonna write 15 x, y, right? That's, that wouldn't be correct. We do have a 1 on the numerator over, now we can do, do that. We do a 3 times 5 is 15 xy. And that's a very nice way to simpli simplify very complex looking fraction into something that's not that bad at all, much easier to work with. Were you okay with that? No, you're happy okay with that one. All right. Not so bad, right? Not so bad. Okay. Remember, we're just going to start building up these things. They're not going to be any harder. It's the same process. It's just using stuff you've used in the past. Honestly, the only thing I'm teaching you today, the only, only new thing, is that. That's it. Everything else you'll have used already in this class. That's kind of nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like this math stuff builds on itself. It's weird, right? <laughs>
Okay, so let's give this one a try. Um, first thing, do we have one <coughs> fraction over one fraction? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's exactly right. It looks like this one, right? Not, not too much that's going on differently than that. We have one fraction over one fraction. Our main fraction bar is, of course, the middle one. We're saying this is our main numerator. That's our main denominator. We have one fraction over one fraction, which is what we need in this complex fraction. The next thing is to do what with this? Before we simplify, well, we are simplifying. That's right. That's what this process is. But how do we do that? We have it like this form. We want it like this. So we're going to set up a division problem on that. If, when you have one fraction of one fraction, that is your next step. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to show that step that we just that we understand that a complex fraction really means division. So I'd like to see that step. That's also going to make sure that you're flipping things correctly, that you don't forget to reciprocate, or that you don't accidentally reciprocate twice. If you do it in your head and then do it again, I don't want that to happen. Uh, so we're going to show that step just to make sure that we understand what's going on here. Got it? Right. Now that we have this division problem, we go, oh yeah. How do we do division? So we do that. So the 6x over x minus 5, that stays the same. The division, though, that changes to multiplication. And the second fraction we get is x plus 5 over 12. Now that's something we've dealt with for a long time now. How do you do that one? Yep, and before we're going to simplify things out, what are we going to do? Also, there's one more thing that we need on this problem. What do we need? We definitely do. If we're multiplying, we better show that there's parentheses around those things. Now, I certainly don't want to distribute. I want to simplify stuff. That's the whole goal, right? Is simplifying things. How about the x minus 5x plus 5? Does that simplify? No. No, it's not the same thing. What does simplify? 6 is 12. So 6 is gone. That becomes a 1. 12 becomes a 2. We'll write this a little bit prettier. We'll beautify it a little bit. What do we have on the numerator? X, that's it. No, X If you just put X plus 5, you're forgetting something. What are you forgetting? Okay, we need that. And what else? Two. Yeah, we generally write the 2 first. X minus 5. Nothing else simplifies. Don't distribute it. You're done. That's as far as you can go. Do you feel okay with this type of problem? So when you have one fraction over one fraction already, it's not so bad. We just take it. Right division problem, reciprocate the second fraction, and we go for it. It's simplification. It's basic, basic simplification. Well, that begs the question, what, why do we even have that step if we, it's always one fraction over one fraction? The answer is, well, it's not always given to you as one fraction over one fraction. Sometimes you're going to get something like the next example I'm going to show you. Right there, it looks so far so good, right? I mean, you could certainly do this problem, that's division. You'd set up the division problem because you'd have one fraction over one fraction. Are you following that? Very similar to the 